How's it going guys? So it's April 19th. It's freaking cold out. It's been snowing just about everywhere. Got my winter coat on. It's supposed to be a wind chill of minus 16 degrees Celsius tonight and be an actual temperature of like, I think it's supposed to get down to minus eight or something. Um, it's really cold. I was just seeding this afternoon. They were like, what the crap are we doing? We just actually shut down. We're like, you know what? Let's just wait until this cold snap passes. So anyway, this just showed up. This is a 724 Fent Gen 6. Sorry about the wind. I do have my mic on to try help that, okay? 724 Gen 6. I traded my, uh, my 720 off on this tractor, if you're wondering, okay? So this is brand new, just showed up. Um, it doesn't have a bucket, good question, because I kept my big bucket. I opted to go with the seven, uh, with the 710 duels. They're Trailbergs. They're VF 710 6042s. I opted for the hydraulic uh, top link. Um, it does have the wheel weights inside. It looks pretty good. Oh, hold on. I got to fix that sign. I don't know why this is so crooked. Yeah, I'm actually going to remove this thing anyway. I'm going to take it off, but just due to my OCD, it needs to be somewhat straight. There we go. It looks pretty cool, eh? I like the duels. I like tires, I guess. This is just a little walk around. Um, I kept the three-point up front. Um, like my pink hydraulics. <laughs> and, of course, the PTO. Front suspension, obviously. So, I know you guys got some questions. I'm gonna try and answer a few of them. But before we do, let's take a look in the cap. So this time, unlike my last 720, I opted for the heated and cooled uh, black leather seat. But since it's new, we're gonna keep the plastic on it. We're gonna shut my door. It's freaking cold outside. Woo! I love this new tack. Like, doesn't this thing just look awesome? Whew. Um, the whole layout of this, put this down here for the sake of the video. The whole layout of this uh, uh, tractor is completely different. Hence, it is the new Gen 6. With a screen right up top. We got more screens and we know what to do with in here, you guys. So we have lights here, here. Um, windshield wiper and stuff over here. Check that key out, you guys. Check that key out. Hold on, let me zoom in on that puppy. Look at that bent green key. Sorry about that. That's where it's at, that key, that's awesome. Um, does it have a laminated windshield? It does not. Come on, you guys. You need a freaking laminated window in these things. Why? Because you guys remember in my 720, I, was, I met somebody and I literally just turned my camera off and then he hucked the rock at me and he got poof! Safety glass all over the place. I had glass down my underwear for goodness sakes. And I don't even know how that was possible. But anyway, there needs to be laminated front windshields. It needs to be at industry standard. Now that I've said that, we'll continue to look around. One thing I noticed is uh, this corner pocket window looks heated to me. Obviously the back window's heated, hence, how, Mike, how you know it's heated? Hence these lines, got these lines in them. 
Uh, this side window is not. So on my last 720, I had one bar, I think seems to me coming across, maybe it went on an angle, I can't remember. Or no, maybe it was up here. Now I can't remember, I'm getting all the different cabs of these uh, fence mixed up. But either way, this is altogether different. This bar goes down here, and then this bar comes over across the top here. And then I guess this must be for an iPad or a tablet or something, I don't know, but uh, I'll probably take it off because I think it's gonna be in my, it's gonna obstruct my view. And then they put this uh, corner post um, here. So I can plug in some auxiliary power outlets there, like my two-way radio and whatever else I might need. Uh, maybe I put a wiring harness in here and mount some stuff, then I can tie it right into power. What else? So I'm just learning with you guys here. Um, I, oh, that sun's getting bright out there. I have actually, sorry about that. I actually have sat in one of these new cabs at Agrotechnica. And I actually did a video if you want to go all the way back. That's a long way back. I put a lot of videos. So, uh, and it was pretty cool then. And it's just as cool now. So let's try and figure this out. So we got our four ways down here. That's new. It was never here before. Um, so we got our, our directional indicators. Forward. Oh, hold on. I guess I'm going to have to put it on foot feet here. Hold on. There we go. Directional indicators right here and reverse and then uh, this by the look of it is the sensitivity of your joystick so if I and then I can up that with um, hold on with these dials right here okay and then this is your trigger and then you got the dials um, what else we got so I can dial that back up to Three. I typically run three if it's just a tractor, two if I'm pulling an implement behind. And then this icon, I'm guessing, is my my gears, gear selector. Let me check. The temperature of the, I can't read that because my mic is in the way. Obviously, it's too cold. It's a fent thing unless the transmission's warmed up, like you need to drive. It is actually a con. I actually really don't like that. Um, it won't shift gears. So when we were wanting to go do grain bags and stuff during the winter, and you start off in first gear, it takes a very long time to wire up the transmission while you're rolling it to finally be able to switch it to second gear. So that's why when we bring the tractor back for night and park it in the shop, we always leave it in second gear. So that way you can take off again at full speed. Um, it's a little trick. Um, so anyway, that'd be your first and second gear indicator. Um, so RPM is right here. And then this would be your foot feed sensitivity. And the RPM is the green. See, the green bar. And then uh, this gauge looks to be our, uh, our engine, our water temperature. And this one is your brake, so, AKA your air pressure. And then uh, this one is your def, we're full of def. And we are around, just around half, a little under half for fuel. And then this must be our uh, hydraulic pressure. I'm pretty sure you could change this. You can have anything you want under here, if that'd be my guess. Again, just guessing, but I'm pretty sure that's how that would work. So, and I think that this thing kind of pops up. So it gives you a little bit more visibility. And then you can bring it back down. Are we in a spaceship here? I, I don't know. So, uh, I'm pretty sure, hold on here. Hold on here. Sorry about that guys. I didn't realize that I had it zoomed in that much. You guys saw a lot more of my face than you wanted to. I apologize. But anyways, um, I'm pretty sure that you're running some stuff just off this screen. I think the tractor is just off this screen. But or maybe you can set them up however you want. I'm sure you can. And do we know how to do that yet? Absolutely not. Is it the fun part is trying to figure out how to do it? Absolutely. Um, what else do we know? So obviously, if you guys are familiar with Fent, all the orange buttons is your transmission and engine components. Um, white, I guess, is GPS. Uh, beacon miscellaneous stuff uh, and blue is your three-point hitch if I can remember that right 
And then obviously yellow is your PTOs, front and back. And uh, so we got green and red up here on the joystick, but as you guys know that you can move those colors anywhere that you would like to. So we got pink here, you can move pink over to here if you wanted to, or you can move pink up over here if you wanted to. And uh, for the longest time, it was always Fent. Fent was like the only one that I knew of, uh, like going back like years, um, that was able to do that. Now, other manufacturers are picking that up as well. Like I know the new case uh, Magnum tractors, you can move them around. So uh, it is pretty handy because you just plug them into your back, plug your hydraulics in, and then you can be like, okay, I want the up and down to be on this one. And I'm like, okay, I want the up and down over here to wing up to be on this one. And you just move them around. Now, you still have to have them hooked up right in the back. You gotta have the plus and the plus and the negative and the negative. You, you know, you can still have them backwards. You know what I mean? Um, but you can move them around to a river hydraulic lever, or you can move them over to your joystick over here if you'd like to, your loader joystick. And which brings us to the loader joystick, completely different. Pretty cool. And then I guess I don't know if, what does this thing do? Oh, this is the, this would be the bucket, it's tipping it. Weird. So anyway, that might get a little bit of taking used to, but I guess you can move it around however you want to. Um, from the little bit that I've learned here, so uh, they're always lit up orange until they're lit up green, and once they're lit up green, that means they're ready to they're ready to rock and roll. So now I'm on foot feed TMS. I can turn TMS off if I want to, or at least I thought that I could. Maybe I can't. I'm pretty sure that I can, but anyways, um, yeah. Once it's green, that means it's been activated. So I was confused when I first come in here. I'm like, holy crap, there's so much lights. Is it all activated? No, it's not. Only if it's green. Um, I do like that they moved the auto steer button up here. Um, yes, you can program this and lock in your auto steer. You're correct. You can pretty much program these things however you want to. But I do like having a special button just for my auto steer up here now. Pretty big fan of that. I don't know what these are, but I'm about to learn, I guess. Um, what else do we got here? So you got, you can still uh, move this up and down or move this sideways. See? Oh, apparently I gotta eat my Wheaties. Or you can move it up here and then put some weight on it, push it back down, however you would like to do that. Um, otherwise, I think that's it, you guys. Now we're gonna pull that sign off because you can't see your uh, your hitch when you're actually wanting to hook stuff up. Oh yeah, I guess. So last harvest, you guys knew that we already had and ran that uh, new 942 tractor, right? I think it was nine 940. Not maybe it was a 930. Anyway, I can't remember what it was anymore. Anyway, can't remember. It's not not important. But it was the new gen as well. It was the new gen, so there's no radio. See? Where you would think there'd be a radio, there is no radio. Nothing up there. It's all in here. You go through your Bluetooth and you can connect anything you want to. You can hook it up to whatever you want to. And then what I do like is they actually put a dial here because I don't want to have to go through my monitor all the time to turn up my, I don't want to go through four pages to turn up my volume. I do not like that. But they did put a little volume knob right here. And I was rocking out, and I would listen. I would let you guys listen to Footloose was the song that I was rocking out to. Pretty classic Mike song. Um, but remember, last time we listened to Footloose last seating, uh, YouTube didn't like that too much. Apparently, it was copyright issues. So we're gonna try and avoid another strike. And uh, you're just gonna take my word for it. The sound system in here is the same as the new nine. Um, it's good, but it's still no John Deere. Just gotta, gotta call. I, I, as you guys know me, I call a spade a spade. It is a whole heck of a lot better than the case. But in saying that, in saying that, I, uh, I did sit in that new Magnum, and I rocked out. And I would say they're very, very close to being equal. This new, the new gen and the new uh, case Magnums, the new cab, like new AFS. Um, I would say they're very, very similar. Neither of them compare to the John Deere. 
just calling a spade a spade. All right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I actually got to go home. And uh, I got some business and stuff I got to take care of. And then uh, I'm hopefully going to go seeding in the morning if it's not too froze. But I just kind of wanted to walk you around this thing a little bit. So I appreciate it. And I know you guys have some questions like, Mike, you can't, you can't just say it's April 19th and think that we're okay with that. Because if it's April 19th and we're watching this now, you're probably May 19th. Why are we so far behind? Why are we so far behind, Mike? Well, you actually raise a very good question and I wanna address that right now, right here. It's because I just have that many videos uploaded onto YouTube. So I typically release three videos a week, uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. You guys already knew that. Um, during the busy season, season you probably already realized I started to up my videos to uh, one per weekday, Monday to Friday. Um, and the reason why is because I do have a bit of a backlog. And the reason why I have so many videos, good question, is because there's actually a lot going on, you guys. You know, maybe we get a 724 dropped off, but maybe at the same time we have a stuck over in the other corner of the farm. And maybe at the same day we're getting something else is happening. There's so much going on. It's pretty hard just to do one video a day because sometimes I might do three videos a day. Other times I might do zero. But it, right now and recently it's been two to three videos a day. Um, which is creating a big backlog. No, I don't release on weekends. I take Sundays off. And uh, just doing five videos a week, um, I'm in that 40 some hours worth of uh, recording, editing, social media, Patreon. Like it's a full-time job. So, uh, and speaking of Patreon, if you were following me up on Patreon, you would already know that this thing showed up literally on April 19th. In fact, you would have known it was coming prior to April 19th. Um, so Patreon is the only social media uh, platform that I use. I don't use Facebook, so don't add me on there. I don't use Instagram, so don't add me on there. I don't use Twitter, so don't add me on there. I only use Patreon. So I apologize, but that's, that's the platform that I run. Um, and on Patreon, I'm just going to put in a plug because I rarely do that on, on videos verbally. Um, we actually have a lot of fun on there. I just realized that I can do polls, and I'm like, holy crap. Think how much fun we can do doing polls so we had stuck polls who do you think is going to win the most stucks we're going to lose the stuck contest who's going to who's going to clean the bathroom um so i'm really looking forward to that and uh, if you guys want to check that out go for it the link would be in the description otherwise you guys have yourself a good one we're going to put this puppy to work and uh well maybe not right now it might have to be a during seeding or after seeding or something but we're definitely going to hook something really big to it and see what it's made of all right, guys. Adios, guys.